Hi, this is Petluni and today I will review several new power supplies for my LED wall projects. So you might ask yourself, why do I want to change anything about the power supply for my LED wall? And there are many complicated reasons which I will explain in detail right now, but let us just turn it on first. So the first problem is that um, the LED wall needs 5 volts and a lot of current. So you, one, one LED takes uh, about 60 to 70. The noise of my current power supply is an obvious problem. But distributing 40 amps of current is another one. Wire resistance has a significant effect on the 5 volts that I want to distribute. If I don't connect each region of the LED wall properly, there is some voltage drop and I get some patchy colors. The blue color drops out first, so I get a yellowy region here. This requires a lot of thick wiring that I would like to reduce in future. Even though the power supply stays cool at this 15 degrees ambient temperature, the wires get much warmer and dissipate quite a lot of power. Even the 32 amp Vago clamps get warm. The current power supply manages to deliver around 4.9 volts at idle, 4.4 volts at around 20 amps when doing this rainbow pattern, and drops to 4 volts at full brightness, which probably has some color shifts already. So I ordered a bunch of new power supplies to test today. This one here is rated to 5 amps and converts mains to 5 volts directly. That one might be useful for smaller LED projects. It's quite convenient since it comes already with a barrel jack and you don't need to wire anything. Not sure how safe it is though. These are two different types of power supplies that convert directly from mains to 5 volts. These ones here are rated for 20 amps. I could wire several of these in parallel to different LED wall sections. They just need a common ground. Then I have this even cheaper ones rated for 12 amps. The benefit of these power supplies is that they directly convert to 5 volts. But the disadvantage is that I would have to wire the mains voltage all over the place, which is potentially dangerous and also requires some certification or inspection in a professional setting. The 20 amp power supplies weigh a lot more than the 12 amp ones and feel a little bit better. Let's see how they will perform. All the power supplies that I ordered are without a fan. I don't want any moving parts that could break at some point. And they also should be noiseless, which is not always the case. The more professional solution I want to try today is to use a quality brand power supply to convert from mains to 24 volts and from 24 volts to 5 volts. So all the dangers from the mains voltage will be shielded by a quality power supply and it will be much easier to distribute 24 volts than 5 volts directly. So I bought the biggest constant voltage LED power supply from Meanwell that I could find. This chunk weighs 5 kilograms. It is capable of delivering 600 watts. Okay, that is the moment I realized that I ordered the 42 volt, not the 24 volt power supply. What the fuck? That's completely useless. You know what? I was even warned before by Dave Darko, but I didn't read his message properly. What a fail. Das ist nicht das Richtige. The company I got this from was kind enough to replace it by the proper one. So here it is, 24 volts. The output is split to two thick cables. They are probably connected internally. There is even some dimming control that I will not use at all. Cool. For the conversion from 24 volts to 5 volts DC I got this here. They have all different ratings. We got 10 amps here. This is also 10 amps in a metal case. 20, 25, and 30 amps. 
I will start to wire everything up with these EU plugs here. This plug even has some IP rating which matches this power supply. Okay, nice. For the other connections I will use Vago clamps which are quite convenient and are rated up to 32 amps. I will use them for all the ends so I don't get any shorts. Even for the dimming control. Okay. Let's plug it in and test if it works. I like to test any metal parts for potential electrocution. The open circuit voltage is spot on 24 volts. Let's test the open circuit voltages of all the converters. The smallest one rated for 10 amps delivers 5.23. The metal case 10 amp converter is more precise with 5.06 volts. The 20 amp converter delivers 5.11 volts. 25 amp converter 5.06. And the 30 amp converter delivers 5.1 volts. Let's test them at a load. We can use my small LED wall for this. The idle current of the 300 LEDs are about 340 milliamps. The smallest one rated for 10 amps. At 3.7 amps we get 23.4 volts input voltage and 5.1 output voltage. With a load of 10 amps at 5 volts we get 22.2 input voltage so that significantly dropped and still 5.1 volts from the small converter. Let's test the temperature. Ambient is 18.8 .8 degrees C. The converter is 29.6 degrees. The temperature rises to 55 after around 15 minutes. Let's try full brightness. We get 12.6 amps from the converter but the voltage dropped to 4.2 volts. So we are not able to fully satisfy the power needs of the small LED wall here. Let's check where the voltage starts to drop. It starts to drop around 12.7 amps. Temperature stays below 50 degrees. Sure, okay. Next one is 10 amps with the metal case. With a load of 10 amps, this converter delivers 4.9 volts and the temperature rises to 43 degree after some time. 43. Trying again the full brightness, this converter doesn't drop voltage that much and the current tops out at around 13.5 amps. The temperature rises to 50 degree. So this metal case 10 amp converter performs a little bit better than the other one. It's capable to supply the needed current for a complete section of 300 LEDs at full brightness. Which is nice. The 20 amp converter next. Starting at full brightness we get spot on 5 volts at 13.57 amps. The temperature rises from 19 to 23 degree after a while. I guess we have to connect it to the big LED wall to get the limits. The main power supply gets barely warm at 22 degrees. After some new wiring we can test our setup. We slowly get to 20 amps, still spot on 5 volts. At 30 amps it's starting to drop to 4.9. The converter still doesn't get hot. So the 20 amp converter is able to deliver 30 amps and from that on it's dropping the voltage. That one is really promising. Let's try the 25 amps next. That one also starts dropping at 30 amps. Even the 20 amps module seems to be better performing than this one. The wires and clamps are getting warm already. From 20 to 30 amps the cases are the same size but the 30 amp converter has thicker wires. The wires barely fit in the Vago clamps. Let's test it. 5 volts spot on at 30 amps. The voltage starting to drop at 32 amps. 32.4 seems to be the maximum current which is below 10% tolerance. 
Now let's try to put two converters in parallel. This is the connection between the left and right side of the LED wall. We will keep the common ground and the data pin, but disconnect the 5 volts. The two converters supplying each half could have different voltages and we don't want to confuse them. But we still need the common ground to successfully transmit the data from the left half to the right half. Now we will connect one regulator to each side here. The setup is a little bit messy, but that should work. Now I was also able to utilize both output cables from the main power supply. This distributes the current better. Let's turn this on. At full brightness we get 44.5 amps output. These are 1200 LEDs. We go from mains to the main power supply, then 24 volts to the two DC to DC converters and then distribute the 5 volts to the wall. Nice! The converters barely get warm. Even the wiring and the clamps get warmer than that. Cool. 22.8 and input is 5.2 and then we have 22.6 and we have 5.3 so we have still double the power in here <laughs> this is working as i expected yes. let's continue with the cheap converters from mains to 5 volt directly the 12 amp one first Open circuit voltage is 5 volts, spot on. Since this is not potted, there is some kind of coil wine which I will try to capture now. Okay, let's turn it on. The noise is quite audible at low current and it's starting to drop at around 2.5 amps. Even though it's rated for 12 amps, it's starting to get hot at 10. 50, 55, 57. I added this sound meter, which is only a few centimeters away. It shows 36.5 at absolute silence and around 40 at full load, which is not audible. Okay, this is full. 12.7 amps, um, voltage dropped to 4.3. At the rated 12 amps, we get only 4.7 volts and it's overheating. 68, 70 degrees, 72, 75, 76, 78. Okay, I turned it off, I think, because this is, oh, it smells, okay. Let's take a look inside. We have a fuse, we have a transformer in the center, two heat sinks. There is a full bridge rectifier from diodes. I didn't find any direct continuity between input and output, so there is no obvious hazard here. But I don't know how it behaves when it fails. Let's test this. This one even has a ground wire. 5.14 volts open circuit. Still 5.14 at idle, 2.2 amps, 5.1 volts. 5.06 at 4.4 amps. The noise is only audible at a close distance. Let's check with the sound level meter. It jumps from 36 to 40. At full load, the noise seems to be increasing, the voltage seems to drop. After a few minutes, the voltage dropped even further and the power supply is getting hotter. 40, oh, 49. A few moments later. 4.67, 59, 61, 63. It's getting a bit louder. Even though it seems to handle the 13 amps for some time, 20 amps will never happen, I think. However, I would trust it to handle the typical load of 7 amps here. 6.8 amps okay this is 10 amps 
4.91. So I assume 10 amps continuous is okay. 62, 63. Let's open it up to check the real temperature. Oh yeah, 61, 64 degree. Here is a fuse, a full bridge rectifier. The caps are rated for 105 degrees C. There is an optocoupler with a physical cut in the PCB. Didn't find any direct continuity between input and output. Looks better than the other one. Okay, it's time for my final conclusion. Uh, we didn't test this one here. It's only 5 amps. It wouldn't be able to power an LED wall. But I have another use case for this. Subscribe to not miss that. So we have the cheap options. Um, this was the cheapest one, uh, but it overheats dramatically at 12 amps and it's getting like slowly hotter at 10, 10 amps. So I would say like continuous rating for these uh, comfortable would be like five to eight amps maybe. On low current, it's really audible. It's like this coil hiss or coil, coil whine from the transformer inside. It's not potted. It's really cheap made, not even a full bridge rectifier, just the diodes to form one. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a ground wire. It's the cheapest option since you convert directly from mains to 5 volts. I will use it only as a fallback option for my projects uh, or like for low currents. This one here uh, is my favorite of these two here since it was able to deliver 10 amps continuously. Um, didn't drop voltage much. It was 4.9 I believe. It was even able to supply 13.5 amps uh, for a certain amount of time uh, with a little bit of voltage drop. 20 amps is really optimistic. It's like a peak current just for a pulse or something. So, but I will definitely use this here and it even has a ground wire. <laughs> then we have the expensive option. This is our supply for 24 volts and this is from 24 volts to 5 volts. This one is expensive and it's a good grade. It has a little bit of voltage drop though. I could adjust the voltage to be higher at the load but it doesn't matter since these here convert to 5 volts anyways and uh, it doesn't seem to matter what the input voltage is. They even accept 12 or 24 volts. So uh, this is absolute without any noise or hiss or anything. Obviously you get what you pay for. At the second stage, so this is the smallest one. I was surprised that it's potted, but um, nevertheless you have the terminals open here and you can't insulate them properly. So these could still get wet or even rust. And you have to add another working step to put cables here. It is able to supply the 10 amps that, that are rated, but it drops in voltage if you uh, use more and it's getting warm. I like the form factor. So these types are my favorites. They can dissipate the heat quite nicely with the case are potted so like this one none of these produce any noise whatsoever so they're completely silent since they are potted they actually supply what they are rated for uh, my absolute favorite is uh, the tay green it's some kind of brand uh, 20 amps since this was even able to provide 30 amps without a voltage drop below 5 volts. This was 10 amps, even this one was able to supply 20% more, more current than it's rated for. The 30 amps rated one has the thickest wires, the output wires are the thickest, but has not much tolerance, it drops voltage significantly um, at 32 amps. 
So in my conclusion, I would say uh, I love the combination of uh, this the thick one and the 20 amps one for a professional setting. For DIY, I think uh, that one is quite good because it's a small form factor and uh, these here, these are okay since they are able to supply 10 amps and don't need an extra supply to for 24 volts. So now I have a base for my next LED wall and I hope you liked that short review. It's only my personal opinion. I'm not an electrical engineer. I couldn't judge if the electronics inside of these are any good or not. If you want to purchase any of these, I link them in the description. Uh, thanks to my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!